Have you started with photo manipulations and struggled painting highlights on the face? Like you find it difficult to figure out where the light will fall on the face based on a particular source of light? Then my friend, I think I have some cool way that might just save your day. Hmm, that kinda rhymes. Alright, so here we are in Photoshop and we have this portrait that I downloaded from Unsplash.com and we'll add some facial highlights over here. But for that, I just darkened it up a bit so that the light becomes prominent. I have simply added a hue saturation and I've dragged the saturation down and then added a curves where I dragged the RGB curve down to darken it up and also added a blue color cast by dragging the top right node of the red channel curve and dragging the top right node of the green channel curve. Then I wanted the light to come from the bottom left corner. So I just took a solid color fill in linear dodge blending mode and add some white color on a black mask so that kind of creates our source of light now we have to paint the highlights but the question is where do we do it like will the light fall on the neck or on the jawline or on the entire face it can get pretty confusing and things can turn out messy so what you need to do is you need to look at things from a different angle let's think of faces as a 3d object with ups and downs with elevations and depressions sounds confusing hold on i'll clear it up in a moment but before that to get some quick references it can be pretty easy you can simply go to pinterest and search with portrait lighting and you can get pretty much a lot of references how the light reacts on the face how it bounces off of the contour and the ups and downs so you can research a bit and apply them on your composition but it can be a bit tricky as you might not find the exact direction of the light that you are using in your composition so coming back to our 3d thing as i've mentioned consider face as a 3d object why not open blender and see it in live action hold on you don't need to open blender i'm just using it for the visualization purpose so i have a plain simple head over here and an area light source which just lights up the whole face and a point light source which i can drag and see how the light falls on the contour of the face by the way i'm not a blender expert and this is not a blender tutorial so i'll no way try to explain what i did over here but i'll leave the project file for you to download so if in any case you want to tweak it you can simply grab this point light source and move it with the move tools here and also use the middle mouse button to rotate the view to align it with your composition and use it as a reference for your highlighting process but if you want to create some scene like this from scratch you can simply type in youtube with portrait lighting in blender and you can get some amazing tutorials so you get the basic idea how light can fall off and bounce off of the different elevation ups and downs on a human face but you might not need to open blender at all because i found this cool web tool by william gweng over at artstation where he has created both male and female heads with dynamic lighting which you can simply move with a mouse and get your lighting reference this is by the way a nasaro head a simple geometrical low poly head that artists use for studying light and shadow on the face anyways with this web tool you can interact with it you can use your mouse to move it you can zoom in and out you can do pretty much everything to find the correct angle of the face and the light direction that you will use in a composition you can simply pause the video and then grab the playhead and drag it to find the correct angle so let's match it up with the composition that we have here so I think the head angle pretty much matches my portrait shot in the composition and let's now grab the playhead to see where I get that light direction from bottom left that I'll be using in my composition. So I think this pretty much works for me. This is the light direction that I was looking for. So I can simply use it as a reference for painting the highlights on my composition. But before going over there, let me also show you another video that I found on YouTube. So this one is by Art of Way and he has also created something similar. He has more realistic 3D renders of both male and female heads, but you don't have any control of moving the head like you got in the web tool on ArtStation. But you can simply move the playhead and match it up with the direction of the light and the head that you will be using in your composition and use it as the reference. So let's go back to William's tool and I'll simply take a screenshot of this and I'll paste it in my Photoshop composition to use it as a reference. For the highlights, you can use any of the methods that you find comfortable, like you can use hue saturation, curves or linear dodge with solid color fill. I pretty much use curves for all of my other compositions, but since this is a beginner friendly tutorial, so I'll use the linear dodge with solid color fill method. So let's create some solid color fills. I'll take some dark shade of orange and then I'll change the blending mode to linear dodge and I'll simply select the layer mask and press Ctrl I or Command I to fill it with black. And now I can paint with white on the layer mask to show the highlights. But let me also 
some mention if you're using pen tablet then you can take a soft front pressure opacity and flow brush and you can control the flow of the brush with your pressure on the pen tablet and it can create realistic results but i know most of you are using mouse so let's do it with mouse only but before that let's tweak the brush settings a bit i'm taking this soft round brush but let's go to window and brush settings over here we'll go to transfer tab and here you can see that inside transfer the opacity jitter is set to pen pressure the control is set to pen pressure because it will be controlled by the pressure sensitivity of your pen tablet but since we are using mouse we'll change it to fade and make the value somewhat from 50 to 70 that i found to work best we'll also change the control value of the flow jitter to fade as well and make the value somewhat like 50. with that done with the white color selected now if you can see if i paint with this brush it fades off okay one thing if you are using mouse you might also want to lower the opacity like i have found the opacity of about 35 percent and flow of about 65 percent tends to work best over here so let's get those values and let's start painting we'll closely follow our reference lighting over here let's paint some sharp highlights on the cheek and we'll let it fall off around the cheekbones let's try to get the shape right around the chin area as well and we'll let the highlights go to the forehead region. Don't worry, if on any area you paint it with excess highlight, you can simply switch to color black and paint with it to remove it. Now let's paint some highlights on the hair as well. And as you can see, the light is bleeding onto the darker areas, which we don't want. So that we can fix by simply right clicking on that layer and going to blending options. And we can drag this black node in the underlying layer slider. And that will reveal some darker details from the underlying layers. But to make it softer, just hold Alt or Option on the keyboard and split it and this will make the transition smooth. So that should be all and now we can continue painting the highlights. Let's paint some highlights over here on the ear area as well. Some highlights around the eye socket and also around this side of the nose and on the tip of the nose. Let's paint some around the lips. I'm doing it quickly so there may be some unpolished and rough areas but you take as much time as you want and do it precisely and you will obviously get better results. Let's add some highlights around the neck area as well and under the chin. I'll add some more highlights on the hair and also on the t-shirt. Basic blocking done, I'll spend some more time fine tuning it. Maybe I'll switching between black and white to brush off areas that are unwanted. By the way, you can also switch to your smudge tool and lower the strength and you can also try to blend in if you have some rough patches. I've spent some more time fine tuning the highlights and I'm pretty much happy how it turned out. And now once the highlights are painted, don't forget the shadows. So here you can see some shadows but it does not cast any strong shadows on the opposite side of the nose or the lips as there is a lot of ambient light here. But if you go to this tool, and maybe you are using a different light direction and there may be some cases where you can see some strong shadows like this one. So don't forget to paint them as well but in my composition I'll just create a little bit of shadows on the opposite areas of the light. I'll simply create an exposure layer and drag the slider to the left and then fill the layer mask with black by inverting it with Ctrl I or Command I and paint some shadows on the eye socket area and on this area of the forehead also on this area of the cheek just beside the nose just where i think it would not catch that much amount of light so yeah that would be all and maybe i'll just add a little bit of brightness contrast and a vibrance boost just to make it look a bit better okay so that would be all you can also download this piece if you want to have a closer look the link should be in the description section and i hope this video helped you to better understand how light falls on a human face and helps you perfect your face highlights if you liked it please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and share this video with your friends well then i will see you in the next video and till then enjoy creating